it's all well and good having all this stuff at your disposal, all the, the scales, the notes, the bending, the vibrato, and all the other things. If you can't actually use it in a, in a kind of sensible way to construct a meaningful solo. I mean, that's what everybody wants to do, to play a great solo, to stand up on stage and be like Hendrix or Clapton or Gary Moore or whoever it might be, and do that great thing that they do. And it is a wonderful thing to do, but the other thing that people like that understand, and in Jimmy's case obviously understood, is that you need to create something that's really worth listening to. And in order to do that, there are certain tricks of the trade that you can bring to bear there. It's not just innate, wonderful musicality, because not everybody is that musical. Even some of the great guitarists, they've had to work hard at what they do, and they've learned certain tricks that allow them to enter doors, go through doors that uh, you might not know exist. Um, and so in order to construct a solo, you need to do certain things. There are certain logical, obvious things that you can do. Now, we've, we've mentioned the notes, we've mentioned the scales, but, for instance, if you were to con construct a solo, uh, it wouldn't make much sense to start your solo on the highest notes that you can play as fast as you like. So it would be ridiculous to say you start your solo... Where do you go? You can't go higher. You could possibly go faster, but not a great deal faster. It certainly wouldn't make much sense. So why don't we do something sensible like well, in the key of A, for instance? Incidentally, um, I'm doing all of this in the key of A. Everything that I speak about or have spoken about applies in every other key. So pentatonic scale, bit A, B, C. So it, everything applies in every key. And you really should learn that. Everything that you learn, say, even though I'm, I'm telling it in A, you should try it in C. Uh, you should try it in, in D. You should try it in E. Um, if not just for the reason that the fact that the guitar is different in these places. The frets are closer together in E because the fret, you know, so... It's a shorter length. You can play faster. It's a bit easier to play in, in, in E. You get different things. You get different um, areas of the fingerboard become open to you. If you're playing in, for instance, G, two nice places to play in G. So it allows you to do different things. In some of the key, A, it, you can do it. Certain notes, certain keys are great for guitar, um, so uh, that's why you often find guitar players would like the key of A because it allows them to start down there and end up up there, which is in fact what I'm talking about now. If you're about to construct a solo in A, it really makes some sense. Uh, again, I'll talk about Gary Moore again. Gary is great at doing that. He'll start off and start if you're in A. He'll carry on and carry on and up, building up in speed and intensity until he gets to the top. And um, because he knows what notes to target, he will end on a really sensible note at the top um, and make you know that he knew where he was going all along. Um, but, I mean, that's a very sensible thing to do. Start down the bottom. Start the lowest position you can. Uh, not all the time, but it's a, good, it's a good starting point. Start low down if you're in A. <laughs> And so on. You could use, I was just using notes from the minor pentatonic scale. They're using the different positions of the minor pentatonic to creep my way up the neck. Didn't do anything particularly clever. They're not really clever at all. Bit of vibrato, bit of string bending, just adds something to it. One of the other great tricks 
in, it's not a trick, it's a sensible musical technique in actual fact, in creating a solo is what's either called call and response or question and answer. Basically, you throw out a question, an answer comes back. You call, somebody responds. Uh, actually, in our case, it's you. You send out the call, you send out the answer. So, for instance, you might start a solo. Um, you might want to go... Um, See that? One was the call, the other was the response. Hello. Hello back. How are you? Not so bad, thanks. What are you doing today? Not very much. But you can see what I'm saying. It's a way of... The notes sort of uh, relate to each other because they're within the notes that we've talked about. They're safe notes. We know what we're, we know what we're doing. But in timing-wise, it, it, there's a relation sort of... You're engaging in a conversation straight away. It makes you feel... It's good for you because it, it, it gives you time to think and, and it does sound like you're composing on the spot rather than rambling up and down on some scale that actually has no relevance to music other than it is music written down. So it's much more conversational. Music should be conversation. It, you're conversing between yourself and your audience and you want to actually connect with them. And the best way to connect with is, is with something that they can comprehend. Um, they wouldn't necessarily understand or realize you're doing a question and answer thing, but it, it makes, it gives them bite-sized chunks that they can relate to. So let's do something like that again, sort of. Um. could actually answer a slow phrase with a fast one, um, but it helps if there's some relationship there. So you could perhaps go... So you've answered it with a phrase that's an octave higher. But you've done it faster. So there's musical relation, but it's different. And it's, oh, it's, it's pricking up the ears. It's make, making you think something's going on here. And, and that's another thing to do. Another great tactic that um, certain players, Jeff Beck is the number one exponent of this. It's actually doing things with the guitar. Now, what's the first obvious thing you can do on a guitar when you're playing a solo? It's change the pickup. So I'm on the bridge pickup of my Strat. I've got other sounds on the Strat. This is actually an old one, so it's only got a three-position switch on it, not the five-way. I can lodge it in between, but it's a bit tricky, so I won't. So I've got three positions here. So, for instance, Gary Moore will often, Jeff Beck, will often sort of... A So you're actually using the guitar as a physical tool to help add some interest to the sound. Um, Eric Clapton used to do it a lot as well. Pete Townsend was, the, again, a, a master of it, and he would do the thing on uh, either a Rickenbacker or on, on a Gibson where you can have one pickup on and the other pickup off and actually do that. with, a, with You make a great big noise, and Townsend would actually be switching one pickup on and another off. So you'd get that eh, 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 kind of sound you'd often get, and that was done with the physical use of the guitar. Hendrix would bash the guitar to make it feed back and do all kinds of weird things. There's loads of things you can do. So when you're playing, you really want to play in nice phrases that sort of emulate either a vocalist or, say, a saxophonist or flute player. So that if you were to play, you wouldn't want to carry on and on and on like this. So you don't want, what you don't want to do is this. It, 
it's rambling, it's, it's not going anywhere. So think in terms of phrasing, think in terms of stopping to talk, or even punctuation, like uh, you put a comma in a sentence to, for a slight pause, you put a full stop for a proper ending, or there are other parts of, of a speech, like a semicolon, which is uh, longer than a comma. You know what I'm saying. So let's, let's try something to, to sound like it's a bit phrased, like a vocalist might do it. So you could hear I was stopping, pausing for long breaks, pausing after short phrases and, lo and longer phrases. So that allows the piece to sound, it's, it's musical, it's more musical because it, it's broken up in other ways. It's not just different notes, it's different notes and different lengths of phrases and pausing in different parts of the, of the, of the piece. So it's again, it's adding other things to your playing to make them sound more interesting to the listener, which is a, a, the most vital, the most vital point.